Good evening from the Cardiff City Stadium where Hull City have finally ended that six game winless run with a commanding 3-1 victory here in South Wales and so important you would have all have seen Norwich's uh, win over Ipswich earlier on which before kickoff took the gap to the top six to nine points with goal difference that was 10 so there was pressure on City to come here and perform and, and perform they did um, they played really well in that first half which were deservedly 2-0 up through Fab, uh, Fabio Carvalho two really good goals the first um, a corner from Abdush actually before I, I talk through the goal uh, Abdush was brilliant today he really really was and the, the first goal came from him winning the ball back uh, midway inside uh, the, ha- the Cardiff half he, he won the ball back himself he twisted and turned he shot at goal Horvath, the goalkeeper, tipped it onto the post and it went behind for the corner. From the corner that he took, he whipped it in and got headed out uh, to Carvalho, who rattled it in with his left foot. A, a really, really good volley through the, a crowd of players. And City were in front. They'd been the better side. They dominated. Cardiff had had a couple of moments on the counter-attack. Um, excuse me, but it, all, it always felt like this was a game that City would eventually score in and you know, so calm were they in that first half Cardiff offered very little the ground was quiet apart from the the 900 or so away fans that were just sat in that in that corner over there who, who were brilliant all afternoon um, and from the moment Carvalho scored you kind of felt right so you're in front you don't feel like this is a game they're going to contrive to lose and uh, and the second goal just before half time really good goal again Lovely interplay between Fabio uh, Abdush and Ozan Tufan. Uh, Tufan then on the edge of the box played a lovely little slide rule pass through to Carvalho. He ran on and slotted it beyond the goalkeeper. That was 2 0 right before half time. And, um, and in fairness, that was nothing more than they deserved. And I guess the question at half time was what at the start of the second half would City go on and get a third and kill the game off and maybe put, you know, help their goal difference get one or two more? Or would Cardiff, you know, find a response because they were really poor in that first half. There was no in, no intensity. They sat off. They let City knock the ball about. And if you're going to do that, we've seen all, all all season that if you let City play, they will hurt you. And and that was exactly what happened in that first half. But you know, the, the, the second half started. City were on the front foot actually. Look look bright and 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 what have you at the start of the second half. Um, but Cardiff gradually kind of worked their way into the game and I think it was 57 minutes Carl and Grant at the near post fired in and um, I think Ryan Orsop will I've not seen a replay I have to be honest I'm only going in in what I saw in real time and I felt that they could have defended that better Uh, the goalkeeper perhaps could have have, goalkeepers never like to be beaten at the the near post and uh, I think Ryan Orsop will be frustrated but as I say um, you have to give the striker credit. It was a good finish. He took it quickly, uh, and he, he bought a ticket. And he, on that occasion, he won the raffle. But um, and then you're thinking, right? They've been just, you, you're, you're almost thinking, here we go again. They were so in control, City. But we know two 0 can be dangerous, particularly when you've got a half-time break. And Cardiff were much more, were much better in that second half. Um, but they they made a, a right mess of the free kick. Errol Bullock, who's the, the Cardiff manager, has just tried to, tried to explain it, that he was talking to, um, to Nat Phillips at the time they had the free kick. The ball was played to Nat Phillips. He wasn't switched on. City won it. Philogene, Jaden Philogene, raced away. Uh, and despite two defenders trying to get back at him and, and clip him, he wobbled a bit, but he, he, he stayed composed. And he, he stuck it in the bottom corner. And that was, that was two minutes after Cardiff had got themselves back in the game. And, and from then on, really, that... You know, that knocked the stuffing out of Cardiff, that knocked the stuffing out of the, the 20,000 or so that were here. Uh, and it, it was exactly what they needed to get back in front. And in truth, they should have gone on and won it by a, a, a couple more. Um, Horvath made a couple of good saves. Abdush, who I said at the top, was, was absolutely brilliant. Uh, right in front of me, actually, in, in the press box, which is just, just up the, a few seats away. Uh, he, he turned on his left foot and he bent it past the goalkeeper and it hit the post and um, they couldn't quite... Uh, they couldn't quite fashion the rebound to make it four and then in, the, in, in stoppage time uh, Jaden won the ball high up just inside his, his, his own half and he raced away basically ran 30 yards on his own goalkeeper to beat and he's blazed it over the crossbar and you thought that was given the fact he'd scored a goal he'd not scored since Rotherham there's obviously questions had been asked by fans about his performances um, you know that's a long for, by Jaden's standards that's a quite, quite a long run uh, nine games without a goal I think it was going back to Rotherham uh, and having scored you'd have backed him to, to rattle that in but it, it wasn't to be And um, but it was 
they, they saw it out relatively comfortable in the end. And that is, as I said, given the Norwich win, Coventry have beat Leeds as well. So they needed to win today. I think if they'd have, we all said before the game, Liam said it himself that today was must win. He wanted more. He wanted three points. He wanted more potency in the attacking third, and he certainly got it. Um, this was a, a comfortable win. I think the stats. I've, I've just looked at the stats actually, um, and I think Cardiff had 11 attempts and, and maybe one or two more on target than Hull City. I think. I, I kind of think that masks just how comfortable City were in this game and how how dominant they were. And they 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 deserve victory. To, of, of that, there was no question. Uh, for me, Cardiff first off looked like a team on the beach. They looked like a team that had um, the season is coming to an end. They, they're not going up. They're not going down. You know, probably didn't help in the, in the week. The manager spoke about the uncertainty. He doesn't know if he's going to be here next season. And I think in that first half, it it was apparent, and City took full advantage of that. So, where are we? We've got six games to go. They're still six points off the top six. Uh, but they do have the game in hand at Coventry, which. You know that looks like a mouth-watering prospect, doesn't it? They've beaten Leeds today in front of what thirty odd thousand at the CBS Arena. That in a couple of weeks' time is going to be an absolute humdinger. But before that, they have two home games. Middlesbrough have beaten Swansea, which has gone down well here today. Um, comfortable victory at the Riverside Stadium. That keeps Borough a place above City, albeit on goal difference. Uh, but they're above City, so Borough will fancy their chances. But they've got two home games. And this this was their tenth win on the road. They've only won seven at home. Now they've got two home games: Borough on Wednesday, and then QPR on Saturday. And they have to win. They've obviously got to beat Middlesbrough. That is the first. That's not too far ahead. I know we could sometimes be guilty of that as fans and, and in the media. And that is our job to not just focus on the next game. That can be the, that can be the club, you know. And that's that's what the players and management can talk about. But that's not our job. We can look as far ahead as we want. And they have got two games. They have to win Wednesday night. They're in, they're in the situation now. Uh, we said on the podcast, the 1904 club on Monday, that of seven games left, they probably needed five wins. After Norwich won here today, uh, we were talking before kick-off, we thought they might need six wins from seven games. They've only ever won three games in a row under Liam, and that came only only a couple of months ago, in that purple patch in February when they won at, at Rotherham, Huddersfield and... Um, and Southampton, they're now going to have to go on a, a winning run, but it's the end of the season, it's the Championship, bizarre things happen, don't they, um, at, the, at this stage of the season. What we do know is there's no room for, there is no room for error. There cannot be, you know, points are no good. A, a point at home to Middlesbrough on, Saturday, on Wednesday night is, is of little use, really. Uh, obviously, it, it might depend on what, on what Norwich do um, and what Coventry do, but realistically, points aren't going to get them in the top six are they so they need to win games they have to win win against Middlesbrough and you think if they can beat Borough and go back above Borough then, then that sets them up beautifully for, for QPR who you know will be fighting for their lives they've lost at home to Sheffield Wednesday a result probably not too many th people thought would happen today uh, they've got to win games and that is where they're at if, they can, if, if we can be sat here this time next Saturday looking back on two wins at home you know, they, they, they would have thrust themselves right back into the into the race. As it as it is, they're still on the periphery. They're in it, but they're on the periphery. Um, but they need wins, as we say. So, yeah, a couple of comments coming in there. Two fan was good today. Abdush was, was for me the best player on the pitch. Yeah, Carvalho scored two good two goals, two really good goals. Two, the first goal, particularly the the, the the technical ability of him to watch the ball down and, and stick it in the in the bottom corner. That was. That was Premier League quality from, from Fabio. Uh, but Abdushi's all round performance, it wasn't just him going forward. You know, there, there was a moment in the, in the sec, early in the second half where the ball was going out on the far side on the halfway line. He raced, chased a lost cause down, kept the ball in play, and Tufan then won the, won the second ball and they, they were on the attack. There was, other, there was another moment in the second half when he was defending, he blocked on the stretch, he blocked a tackle on the edge of his own penalty area. He was he was lying on the floor, he stuck out his leg and blocked the second shot. Um, he's just all action and you can't... We interviewed, we were lucky enough to interview him on, for, on Thursday for the first time. Um, a lovely, lovely young lad, he's only 24. He's got such talent He's got and he's got a heart of gold. Uh, and he, he's, he's, he's arrived here and, and he's hit the ground running and his quality, he just needs a goal now. I mean, that's the only thing that's missing from his, his play. He probably should have scored at Leeds. I think if, if you give him the chance back at one each, Ellen Road, when Tyler Morton breaks and, and picks the pass and, and, and Abdush is on the right-hand side of the penalty area, bends it, 
bent it just wide of Melier's far post. I think if you give him that back, he, he, he'd probably score. Obviously, it's a very similar chance today, actually, where he bends it and it hits the post, comes back out, and Philogene and the, and the defender scrap for it, and, 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 and Cardiff end up clearing. Um, he deserves a goal, and hopefully, he's not too far away. Maybe he can break his duck on on Wednesday night. And key for, for Jaden, obviously, as I said before, a lot of talk about Jaden and, and his form. Uh, the goal will, will hopefully do him the world of good. He was much, much livelier in the second half than he was in the first. Um, worked really, really hard. There was a lot of good performances. I thought Jacob Greaves back in the team today, superb. Won two head at nil nil. Won Cardiff had two very quick corners. He won two really important headers in his own six yard box. Picked up his customary booking, uh, which is, you know, is par for the course. But look, they've taken a bit of heat over the last month or so of, of City some of it just some of it a tad unjust uh, there was a bit of pressure on them today there was a lot of questions being asked and they needed to come here and they needed to win and they've done that and they've done it fairly comfortably that's all you can ask and it keeps the season alive we take it to Wednesday uh, and we go again a um, couple of housekeeping points um, there was no Louis Coyle today he was here but he wasn't risked um, they'll assess him ahead of Wednesday night Ryan Giles wasn't here uh, and it's touch and go whether he will be back fit. Grounds will have a good time, isn't it? Um, Ryan Giles will, will, be, will be assessed ahead of Wednesday night, but Matty Jacob come, came in and did a, a, a good enough job today, so no, no great concerns if, if Giles can't face his former club on Wednesday night. Uh, and the big news coming out of today is that I know we, we said on Thursday that Liam Delap was expected back. Well, we've had it confirmed from Liam Rossini tonight that Liam Delap will be back on, on Monday at the training ground in full training probably Wednesday night's a bit too soon for Liam but he will be back in the squad certainly on on Wednesday uh, sorry on, on, I was reading sorry I was reading your message about Omer uh, Omer's um, being dubbed the Turkish Messi yeah Liam Delat will be back in the squad on Saturday which is a massive boost they've missed him haven't they um, they really have missed him so that's great a great way to end I think what has been a, a really positive trip to to, uh, to Cardiff for Hull City um, back to winning ways League double over Cardiff, three goals, a tenth away win. Now, the challenge, go and win your two home games. Win your two home, home games, you're right back in the thick of it. Um, that is all you can ask. So, well done to the uh, the 900, the 1,000 or so that were here today. Long trip down here, completely worthwhile, and they got a free packet of biscuits on the way down from McVitie, so that's, um, that's superb. So, look, that's it from here at Cardiff. Uh, we will have the podcast for you on Monday morning, myself, Prutz, uh, the ever cheerful Burnsy and Fletch will be with you Monday, so keep an eye out for the podcast. If you want to get in touch, of course, you can tweet the 1904 Club. Um, we will be with Liam Rossini at the training ground on Monday, ahead of the game on Wednesday, where hopefully City will get three points. Thank you for watching, everybody. Take it steady. Safe trip back to the fans, heading back to East Yorkshire, and we'll be with you for the, with the podcast on Monday. Up the time.